I love this knife and I never use it. It can go on my belt, but I still have it incorporated into my outfit. But I thought it would be a good segue into this video. And this video, as I pry and put it away and not hurt myself because I've been super clumsy lately, is my ADHD and my Jeremiah Johnson solution. Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit about what that actually means. Uh, I'm ready to turn some of the existing knowledge about what we believe ADHD is on its head. And with that, but I hope you'll stay with me, even if you don't have ADHD, because I think this kind of brain was designed to save the world. And right now, that is super important. So if you care about you, you care about other people, you care about what's going on in the world, and you just are curious about what I mean, I hope you'll stay tuned. Deep breath. See you on the other side. So if this is your first time, I don't usually carry a knife around. <laughs> you might see me with an axe. But my name is Jill. Uh, I live out in the middle of nowhere and I've been living in the dirt for going on 10 years now and starting a couple months ago I thought I would see what real off-grid was like. I started in winter, super uncomfortable, but have learned so much that it's also coincided with this uh, movement into the realities of something that I struggle with is my own ADHD, a lot of other things, but I'm gonna talk about that because it's a good keyword for people to find this. My real message is for people who are warriors, uh, mavericks, and heroes, because I think this type of brain thrives in chaos and crisis, will rise to the occasion, and also does really well living in the wild. You know, my personal motto is stay human, live free, die wild. And while I really wanted to make this a super excellent video, the reality is, is my current situation is leaving me with so many boundaries and limitations on what I can do technologically. And I really want to get this idea out here. I'm going to do this short one, as you know, for those who follow, I'm never too short-winded, because I want to send it to a few people and see what you think. So when I talk about this idea of my ADHD, some of the things that I've been looking at that I wasn't as aware of, uh, caveat, I am a licensed clinical social worker, so I have a 25-year history of working with people. So I'm not just somebody reading stuff off the internet. But uh, I was slow to understanding uh, some of my own issues with ADHD because, you know, when I was growing up, it was the young, hyperactive boy. I was not hyperactive, <laughs> even though I think a lot like a boy, but I like to say I have a fast brain, fast emotions, fast ideas, super slow body, and uh, that's just who I am. And so it's made the physical part of my life extremely difficult. But two of the things I've been looking a lot at lately that are kind of buzzwords in the ADHD community is executive function and emotional dysregulation. And one of the things that keeps getting talked about is how people who are wired like me and others, what's being said is that there's an inability to regulate based on external stimuli, meaning uh, you don't follow the rules in school very well, uh, so you're not that good of a student, you irritate the teachers, you disrupt the class. I never did that. <laughs> or, the, or the work meeting or the board meeting or whatever the corporate thing was. Uh, so you were disruptive, you were annoying, you weren't paying attention, you were fidgety. Uh, all these things that are very disruptive to society. Uh, you know, executive function, things like being organized, planning ahead, being time sensitive, uh, emotional dysregulation, the inability to inhibit behavior, the inability to uh, maintain calm, having an explosive uh, temper, uh, all this stuff that's disruptive to what I'm calling uh, 
is students, soldiers, and slaves. Because a good student, a good soldier, and a good slave shut up, put up, follow the rules, don't make a fuss, and they're very easy to be domesticated. Now, that's a word that I've been using a lot lately because my thing is uh, stay human, live free, and die wild. And uh, I started to come up with this stay human when I started to see what's going on with artificial intelligence and this post-human world that's being built. Uh, die wild, to me, really came about because as the more I lived in nature, the better I felt, the healthier I felt, the more sane I felt. And as I'm reading things about uh, ex uh, executive function and emotional dysregulation, I'm starting to recognize, and this is the key thing, so if you hear anything, I have a lot of external regulation for my both executive function and my emotions, and it's in nature itself. The sun gives me external feedback for time and temperature and comfort and activity. Uh, nature gives me a lot of consequences to my behavior, so I have to adapt to nature because nature isn't going to change. Uh, my emotional dysregulation, I get a lot of feedback from nature. Animals run away, so if I'm hunting, I got to keep it together, right? If I'm fishing, I have to stay calm and quiet. Uh, if I'm in danger, I have to explode with emotion and run or fight. Uh, I have to make instantaneous decisions that are not part of linear time. They have to be so fast that I trust who I am within and what's happening outside of chronological linear time that allows me to stay safe and function. You can insert rattlesnakes there uh, and be safe to be able to respond in a way that isn't methodical, slow, and linear. And all the things they talk about with executive function and emotional regulation, it's all about conforming to a society that is domesticated. And by domestication, we've removed all the external stimuli, the sun, the wind, the temperature, the seasons, 24-hour day clock, uh, food based on understanding the clock, long-term consequences of not understanding the laws of nature. Domestication has removed all of our external stimuli, consequences, outcomes based on decisions. And what I've really accidentally learned is that the more I run by the laws of nature, the better I do. And that sort of leads me to this Jeremiah Johnson solution because like so many people, you know, I've watched that movie and gone, I wish I could do that. And I have a, you know, a little tiny version of that. I'm not living on the ground uh, most days. I say living in the dirt because, uh, you know, I'm without, right now I'm without electricity. I'm without running water. I don't have plumbing. I have to do almost everything outside. And I love it. And I bitch and I moan and I complain. But I love it. I love the dynamic aspect of a difficult, hard life. And I like the amazing internal reward of getting through something super uncomfortable. I love the amazing internal reward of chopping wood, carrying water, having awesome tea and coffee, and a warm fire by my own hands. And that's very difficult to explain to people if you haven't had that experience. And it's not camping because camping is a short term temporary thing. I've been going on 10 years of doing this. So uh, this is a long term thing. I love the learning. I like the dynamics of everything that's happening. And what's key here too is that nature can handle my emotional dysregulation. If I have a violent outburst, I might scream at the cows or the crows or whatever it was that are pissing me off, the snakes. They don't care. They just get out of my way and the same day it's like nothing happened. People hold grudges forever. People are so uh, judgmental about how it affects them. They don't know how to depersonalize it. And so we are in such a domesticated world. The more I listen to what's traditional ADHD talking about uh, executive function and emotional dysregulation, all I'm hearing now is we want you compliant as a student, as a soldier, and as a slave. And 
We are at such a critical juncture right now, I cannot express how important this is to really understand that there's a group of people among us that have always been with us since the beginning of time who move forward in the face of danger, who stand up when everybody else runs away, who fight when they know they're going to lose their life, who say no in defiance when insanity is trying to crush their spirit. We are so important, and this whole idea of the Jeremiah Johnson solution is really just saying we are not disordered, we are not dysregulated, we are not um, dysfunctional. We are just are living in a world of domestication that doesn't fit for the way we are wired. And some ADHD talks about the hunter-gatherer farmer model, and I'm going to talk about that uh, another day. But another group talks about this brain wiring as the scouts. Those are the people who went forward and looked for things for the tribe. And the way you did that was because you were so highly attuned to the world around you uh, that you were more sensitive than most people. And that made you an extremely valuable part of the tribe. Now we want you dumb and compliant and shut up, don't listen, don't pay attention. We overload you with information, we overload me with information, <laughs> it gets very difficult. And the silence of nature, the rhythms of nature, they have brought so much of who I actually am back. And what's critical about that is it's not important or valuable to most people. And even more importantly, if you haven't experienced something, you don't know what you're missing. And had I not had this intense long-term experience, I never would have understood. Now, it's infinitely more complex. Uh, I want to give a short story about Kit Carson. And so, oh, it's always too long. I'm already way too long. But this is a really good story. So, Kit Carson was, was a mountain man. He was a lot of other things, but uh, he had a period of his life where he was a mountain man. And... For those of you who don't know, those were guys who took off into the west. It was still wild, and they trapped and hunted. Not a fan of killing animals for any reason or their fur, but other than that piece, can totally relate and identify with these guys. But over the course of his life, he was incredibly skilled and intelligent, but he also couldn't read or write, even though he could speak six to seven languages and multiple uh, Indian languages and sign language. He had a tremendous ability. So my guess is he was dyslexic. Uh, he loved uh, the dynamic aspect of scouting. He was also explosive in his temper. He would kill without a moment's notice. And he was part of that horrible Navajo uh, trial, uh, tr a death, scorchers policy where he just killed people based on starving them out. So he was smart. He was uh, somebody that has a very, uh, you know, he was smart. And my guess is he was very ADHD. He was dyslexic. He didn't fit into the normal world. Uh, and it is rumored that his first wife, his first two wives were Native American, that in his time he spent living with Native Americans was his happiest. And my guess is he was doing what I'm doing. He's basically living most of the time outside, being regulated and organized by externalized consequences that are life and death. My brain loves that. So uh, I'm just bringing this up, and I'm really curious about your feedback. So if you have ADHD and you've ever thought about any of these things, I would love to see your comments below because... Uh, I think we're at a critical point in this world. I am super, this is such a critical moment. Time is sensitive. I wanted to get this out. I wanted to start getting some feedback because uh, right now things are getting ready to, I think, full scale into a different version of life, uh, one that most of us haven't known. What I know, having a long history of trauma and first responder and life and death and excitement and frontline kind of work, that's where I thrived. I suffer under domesticated normalcy. You put me in a little bit of chaos, and I am a superstar. So we're in a moment of time, I think, where people like me are going to rise up. Probably not me. I'm getting too old for this. But there's going to be people rising up. And I really want to get to you and let you know that you're not disordered. You're not broken. You're not disabled. You just are domesticated and it doesn't fit and it's not supposed to. It was not the way we were created in the spirit of all that is of God or whatever you want to call it. Domestication is not 
healthy. I'm not saying civilization, but just ask the cows. They don't have a choice. They just have to shut up and put up. And as a child of God, I don't think that's what I was made for. How about you? So we're going to take a deep breath. I'm going to revisit this. But again, if you got through this whole thing, awesomeness, put your comments below. If you have ADHD, have you ever been outside for a long enough time to become regulated by external stimuli, external time to match whatever's going on with you internally? And how does that feel when I talk about that? Does that fit? Can't wait to read your comments. Deep breath, my friends. I am going to get back to my off-grid series. I suggest you watch that too. We'll see you next time.